Hello everybody, this is the last lecture and it's on ocean plastic pollution. So, uh, what I think, I, I think it's a really easy case to make that people should care about ocean plastic. Um, you know, nobody wants their beach to look like this. Nobody wants to have the ocean have this much trash in it. Uh, but there are places that do look like this and places that are have particularly bad waste infrastructure. Um, the, a lot of plastic and trash uh, gets put into the ocean. Now, I've actually seen this, you know, I'm not that old. I'm what am I now? 37 years old. And I have actually been able to see through my time of repeated visits to um, to the ocean, to this one specific place in, in um, that I happen to go to with my family occasionally in Mexico. And over my lifetime, I've been able to see that there is more plastic that I'm seeing washing up on the beach every day throughout the day than there used to be when I was younger. And it's, um, it's really sad to me because, you know, we've all seen these pictures of what happens when plastic gets, um, you know, put into the ocean. Animals are eating it. Animals are dying of it of, you know, basically their entire stomachs are filled with these uh, pieces of plastic, um, 100 plastic bags in the corpse of a whale. Um, and, and, you know, I think a lot of people don't necessarily understand the magnitude of the problem that we're starting to reach. So uh, there's this, this idea of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. There's two basically places in the U.S., uh, sorry, in the Pacific Ocean, um, you know, and there's there's these garbage patches in the Indian Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean too, but what we see is because of the way that the currents are going, um, what happens is we get this conglomeration of ocean plastic in th this area off, sh um, off the shore of, of California and you know off of Japan basically but the thing is there's there's plastic everywhere right wherever you are in the ocean it's really not hard to find pieces of plastic floating around um, I was once in Thailand on a boat that was um, several hundred miles offshore so a long ways away from and, you know, from the shoreline in the middle of the Indian Ocean, not in the middle, but, you know, a, a couple hundred miles offshore, and I was never out of sight of big pieces of plastic that were floating in the water. And that was just the big pieces, not the small pieces that, that, um, that you can't really see. You know, there's a pretty cool story about a, um, a container that um, in 1992 was going from Hong Kong to the U.S. And it was a container of, you know, little rubber duckies, the little, um, you know, bath toys. And the container fell off the ship and 29,000 rubber ducks were spilled. And that was in 1992. Well, what happened is they kind of go all over the place within you know 1992 within the same year they're washing up in Hawaii up here the currents took them up into you know British Columbia and Australia or Alaska but you know for years and years and years we they can actually track them that they some of them made it up into the Arctic Ocean and transported over all the way to France. Um, the last one that could be tracked to this rubber ducky spill was in 2007. So 15 years later, you know, those rubber duckies are, were still found. Um, and what happens though is when plastic gets put into the ocean, it doesn't just stay whole, it breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces. But that, what that means is that, you know, they're harder to clean up even. Um, and smaller and smaller organisms might be starting to eat these things. So, you know, beyond just spilling one container ship, spilling a container in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, what we see is where plastic is being put into the ocean is it's essentially 
1,000 rivers are responsible for 80% of plastic pollution. Now, what we generally see then is the developing countries where there is um, less, less strict controls on garbage um, disposal and um, you know, landfill technology is not as good. Um, what we generally see is in, in those developing countries, that is where the waste is coming from. So, um, you know, there there are some rivers in the U.S. that are responsible for some of this, but, um, you know, the biggest dots here are in basically Southeast Asia. This is where most of the um, plastic trash is entering into the ocean. Once it gets into the ocean then, what we see is that um, there's a lot of adsorption. That is not absorb with a B, it's adsorb with a D, which means basically sticking to the surface. So um, PCBs, DDTs, a lot of pesticides and, um, and other harmful chemicals will stick to the surface of these plastics. And then when animals are eating these plastics, they absorb those chemicals and they can actually get toxic doses of these chemicals because they're eating so much plastic. They might just poop out the plastic, uh, might not, depending on um, how big a piece of the plastic is. But um, let's say that they do you know, poop out that plastic. By the time that plastic goes through, those, those pesticides and those chemicals can um, will get absorbed into the body and of the organism and cause cause problems. Uh, what we see is the you know the biggest problems that we see are cancer, mal, uh, you know just defects in body defects, um, birth defects, and then impaired reproduction. So um, when we think of you know well plastic bags might not be that big of a deal in in the water you know organisms can just eat them up and then poop them out well that's not necessarily the case there's been two you know pretty much um, six I uh, wouldn't necessarily say successful yet but two larger scale uh, uh, projects that have gone to try to clean up some of this plastic um, there's the Ocean Cleanup Project. This is this is by far the most successful group that's been looking at um, doing this. Is um, they use this big this big boom, okay? And what happens is they put um, this this big boom with like a skirt that goes down into the water, and it basically gets dragged slower then the water currents. The water currents are moving faster so, so the fact that they have like a sea anchor here allows then the um, the water to basically flow through this skirt that they have then collects a bunch of plastic and then it concentrates that plastic and um, eventually they take they drive a boat out to wherever this place is wherever the, the um, the big apparatuses and um, what and then they you know basically dragging that through that water put that all that plastic then into the boat and then go put it in a landfill somewhere um, if the the ocean cleanup project has a pretty um, big goal that they want to be able to clean half of the Pacific Garbage Patch in five years and they think they can do that if they were to have a hundred of these apparatuses going at the same time and what they um, really have now they're, they're, they've tested successfully tested um, a prototype and now they're trying to find the funding to be able to do this because this is very expensive to do um, while you can recycle the plastics, the uh, recycling uh, market for some of these plastics is not necessarily um, economically profitable. Um, it's, you know, the, the method is 3% the cost of conventional methods. Now, what I mean by conventional methods is basically you could drive a boat with a big net pulling through the water and pulling out plastic, but um, that's really expensive to drive this boat carrying around this heavy net, right, and pulling it through the water. You're going to waste a lot of gas and probably, you know, 
create gl more global warming problems than you're actually helping with ocean plastic. So even this, you know, passive collection system that doesn't really require any um, any like movement through the water or at least pulling through the water other than towing it into position it costs about four and a half dollars per kilogram of plastic removed now you might think oh, okay well that's not that bad but that's only two pounds of plastic costing almost five dollars and the huge number of tons and tons and tons of plastic that we have in in the ocean is just uh, you know incredible so um, this will be a very expensive undertaking, but um, it's something I think that you know we should really be paying attention to. Um, one other group that has been doing um, some some good work and is called For Ocean. Um, they're a nonprofit or organization where basically what they do is they. Um, sell these bracelets that some of the bracelet is made out of recycled plastic from the ocean that they're they're cleaning up but um really you know that that's not they're not like basically turning ocean plastic into bracelets uh while that is part of it that's not really what their business model is made out of they're just um you know this is essentially a twenty dollar donation and you get a cheap little bracelet out of it but they've been doing um uh, uh their you know, a multi-million dollar organization that is doing a lot of good work and cleaning up um, in the South Pacific is where where they're based. Um, and um, so if you want to check them out, check out uh, Ocean Cleanup, um, the Ocean Cleanup Project. I think th these are two of the best um, organizations that are you know cleaning up our oceans and if that's something to interest you I would um, suggest you check them out all right so that is it for the lectures for this class I hope you enjoyed them and I won't see you all later